Right, I do. Yeah. And you have the lows of your voice. Yes. But it's not in the lower throat. No, it is. I love this voice. Do people say anything about this People voice? love my voice. I get compliments all the time about my voice. But people complimented your old voice. They did, but they said it's different. It's different, but it's still good. They like to hear me talk. All the time I, hear, I meet people and they always say, I love to hear you talk. With this voice? With this voice. So you can have a very attractive, yes. warm, outgoing voice. You can have huskiness in your voice. You can have friendliness. You can have all you want and more without pathology. Without pathology. What happened to the vocal cord nodules when you went back to they, your they, they, they were gone. The doctor, I went to three or four doctors and they were all gone and they haven't regrown back. How long has it been? And it's been seven years. Uh -huh. And I still practice. And it's been a period of time yes. that tells you you can use your voice well, yes. easily, throughout the day. All day. Does your voice fade or fail throughout the day? Never. Not so anymore. it just holds up? It holds up all day. Never tires. What do you think about that? I love it. I, I love voice rehabilitation. <laughs> I'm your greatest advocate. I, I always brag about you. I love it. But you felt originally that it was some area of discipline unknown to you. Yes that had no meaning to Joe Powers. Absolutely. Now you're, you're saying, I love it, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful... I love it, it's wonderful. There are a lot of people out there that have your problem. That's and true. say, oh, that's just, you know, nonsense, that's true. poppycock. You can't get a voice that lasts all day long and have a sexy, sultry, effective, author authority in your voice kind but of you thing. Can. You can. But you can, Dr. Cooper. So what do you tell people who don't so what believe? So what I say to people that I meet, because once I came to you, I became conscious of everybody that has a voice disorder. Somehow, when you go through rehabilitation, voice rehabilitation, you become conscious of other people with a voice impediment. So whenever I meet people, I always tell them what I went through, my experience, how I found out about it, what I went through, how my voice was reacting before I met you. And, and they're, they're amazed at it. They're, they really are. Some have been to voice therapists before, but they, it hasn't been successful. And most of the time it's been because they haven't done what they're supposed to do. And they thought the same way I did, that it was your job to do for them what they had to do for themselves. So they want the voice they want pathologist, the voice to, pathologist do it for them. to do it for them. You realize somewhere along the line, second or third months, I said, you have to do it. Absolutely. You told me that. Yes. But, but I didn't believe you. Why did you believe that? I don't know. I, I don't know why. It was just ignorance of, of, of what the voice does, what it could do. Because I used to sing and I loved singing. You know, I, I loved being on the phone. I loved my job. And, you know, I thought if I lose that, I'm going to lose something. I thought I was really going to lose something. Like well, I, going to I therapy. felt that you wouldn't lose it. You would be back on the job. Yeah, you told me that. But it didn't, it didn't really sink in until about two and a half months after we started. And then it became a joy for me because I could see the improvement in what you told me by doing what you said. But you had to hold on for two or two and a half months. Yes. There are individuals that don't hold on that long. That's they try true. it for a That's week true. or two or three and they drop out. They want something done for them. What held you well, You know what therapy? I just decided? That when you told me I had to do it myself, and, you, and I said, and I thought, what have I got to lose? You told me the pros and cons. You told me what could happen if I didn't do it, and you told me what could happen if I did do it. And I chose to take the route that you gave me because I knew it, could, it couldn't get any worse. I was talking as low as I could talk. Could you talk in that voice now? No, I can't. Why can't you? Because I'm talking in the correct voice. <laughs> no, but why now. can't you go back? I can't. I can talk in this voice. I know, voices. but I can't. But that's the voice you talked on the lower throat that's for a true, long I while. That's true, I did. Because and you love that voice, and you don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to do it anymore. Joe Powers doesn't want to talk no, low anymore. No, I do not want to talk low like that anymore. Why? But you, you, you love that voice. I did, but I love this voice now. I love this one. You don't even want to take a stab at it. No, I don't want to try it. I never why do. Not? Because I don't want that voice. It's not normal. So you completely changed. You completely. know where your old voice is and you know where yes. your new voice is. Yes, I do. And in a sense, Joe Powers loves a new voice. I love it. I love it. Where do you feel your voice when you talk? Right up here. Right. Around here. And right there's two thirds of yes. in the face. Yes. You're talking in the face. Yes. Just point to where your old voice was. Point to it. Down here. Lower throat. Way down here. Right. Let me just explain to the audience. If you're talking 
down here. You're going to get tired voice, you're going to get nodes, polyps, contact ulcers, you're going to get premalignancies, possibly leukoplakia, keratosis, papillomatosis. Those are big names for premalignancies. Don't talk in the lower throat. You would wind up with all kinds of problems. And you can also get a strangled voice. I say the strangled voice or spastic dysphonia comes from talking in the lower throat, and you don't know it. The physicians today say it's due to neurological causation. Not so. I don't find that to be the cause. Case after case, year after year, I find the individuals who have spastic dysphonia or the strangled voice talking from the lower throat. And then the psychiatrists say, forgive me, they say the individual doesn't want to talk. I find that nonsense. The individual basically does want to talk. They simply don't know how they're talking in the lower throat. Voice rehabilitation is an area that is not known to the public and is not known too well to physicians. There are very few voice pathologists out there that specialize in this area of voice and you've got to know that your voice should be up here not in the lower throat. Joe Powers now talks up here, her voice is open, it's friendly, it's easy, she doesn't want to go back to the old voice. If you're talking down here you have tired voice, people ask you what did you say, could you repeat yourself, I'm sorry, what did you No one thing, you're talking about symptoms of misuse, it's voice suicide. I call it the All-American Game. You don't have to live with it. Joe Powers did. Joe, what do you suggest that people do if they have a tired voice, just on a general basis if you run into them? Well, if I, when I uh, meet people who say their voice fades out like mine did, I show them the exercise that you taught me. What's the exercise you want to do? Well, I first go, you know, oh, with, hmm, the, you, with the Cooper Instant yes, Press. I go, yes, I do that, and okay. then I tell them how to breathe through the stomach, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I have them lie down. Some of them I actually show them what you showed me because I thought I was breathing correctly, you know. And they, some of them will do it. Some people will do it, and it changes. I let them hear it, the the right tone, you know, by doing that, yeah. finally right. And uh, it works sometimes, and they believe me. Some of them have called you and not kept the appointments. Well, they don't believe yeah, it can be done. Yeah, they don't. They don't. But but they knew how I was because I have tapes of how my voice was before. So you have an awareness of what happened, Joe yes. Powers, and where you are now. Yes, I do. Do you feel the buzz or a ring around your two-thirds solution around your lips and nose yes. when you talk? Mm -hmm. Does it feel easy and comfortable? Yes, it's comfortable. When you There's wake no up strain. in the morning, no strain. No strain well, that's at all. That's a key. No, no strain, strain at all. whatsoever. No strain. Isn't no that beautiful? strain you whatsoever. Talk. It's a joy to talk. A yes. lot of people love to talk, but it's a strain. Don't make it a strain. When you wake up in the morning. Do you have what Johnny Carson I hear calls the grumpies? No. Is your voice low, husky? No. It's up here now. It's exactly up where it should okay. be. Okay. If your voice is low down here when you wake up, bring it up here. Mm -hmm. Do what I call the humming of America. Mm -hmm. Put your voice up there. Use the Cooper Instant Voice Press. Take your finger and put it at the bottom mm -hmm. of your breastbone and go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make your voice go up there. Get it off the bottom. The morning voice is basically the most relaxed voice of the day. Don't sag, don't let that voice be there because you're dragging at the bottom of your range and you're going to be talking in the lower throat doing that. So get that voice. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, is your voice clear and efficient, Joe Powers? My voice is clear and efficient all day. So you could talk forever? Yes, never tires. So what has basically happened is you have a voice now that you can talk forever and you talk as much as you want? As much as I want, as long as I want. When you were out of voice, what happened? Every sentence, I would run out. My voice would fade out. I would be talking, and all at once, you just couldn't hear me anymore. It, I mean, the words were there, but they just wouldn't come out. What did you feel psychologically and emotionally from that? Was it traumatizing to you? It was traumatizing. Frightening? Yes, very frightening, because especially when I was told that the nodules could turn into cancer, you know, or I could go through spasm of some kind. Spastic dysphonia. Yes. They told you that. They told me that. So that was frightening, you know, very frightening. Or bleeding of the pops. You know, words, that was told that too. In other words, you can get an ulcer of the vocal yes. area. Yes, yes. It was very frightening. So and that, in a sense, was scaring you? Very scared. Very scared. Do you feel that was appropriate to tell you you could get that? I think so, for me. I needed something. You needed something. I needed something to jolt me. <laughs> yeah. Why you were indifferent to doing anything? I was. I was skeptical. I I can use that word well because that's really what what it was. It was a mystery to me because I'd never I had heard of it, but it was 
like it was a long way off, you know, like it was something that, that I'd heard of a long time ago. It never applied to me. I don't know what concept I thought about voice rehabilitation, but in my mind, in my subconscious mind, I thought it was something you had to do for me. Did you have a good time after you changed your attitude? I had a great time. Great I time. still am, yes. And Terrific you're delighted time. to have your voice now. Yes, I love it. You think great things of voice rehab? I do, and I'm, I'm always asked to speak somewhere or do something, and I like that. I love it. You don't think about your voice as failing or fading, so you no. have an assurance and a, and a confidence that you're going to be there. And I it do. it helps you to talk in public. Yes, it does. It gives me that confidence I need. You retired from the uh, police Probation department. department. Yes. When was that? Recently? Yes, a year ago. How long were you with them? For 39 and a half years. 39 and a half years. Yes. Yes. And with your voice, you could have gone on for another... Could have gone on another, another 35 <laughs> years or more. So you went from trauma, mental trauma, emotional, psychological concern, mm -hmm. to a voice where you feel comfortable, happy. confident. Yes, confident, happy-go-lucky. I, I was confident with the old voice and to a point, but when it got to be a, it became a burden to me because it was getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And it wasn't, you know, it, didn't, it wasn't good voice because it tired me out. I physically? didn't want to talk physically and mentally. It affected me. It did all the no-no's, yes, all it the did. negatives. Yes, it did. So you want to keep your voice up too? Yes. And you liked that voice because it was low and sultry and sexy. Oh, I thought it was so sexy, and the men said it was sexy, and that was it. And today? Today they think it's sexy now. And your voice is up. And there. my voice is up. And right. you're in the mask. I you love have it. everything you want in a voice. Everything I want. It was you, the best thing ever happened to me, Dr. Cooper. So you can't get your voice back? Yes, you can. I'm a, I'm a witness to that. You're a walking? I'm a walking testimony to that. Uh -huh. Yes, it can be done if you believe it and you practice it. So you feel comfortable using the voice throughout the day? All day. No negatives, no, no concern? No concern whatsoever. And you know it's going to come out? I'm assured it's going to be there. Yeah. Yes. And you've never had a problem since? Never had one problem. No growth, regrowth or anything. And no surgery? No surgery. So you're a, a testimony to yes. the fact that voice rehab works. You just it won does thousands work. and thousands. Yes. And you had to be convinced. I it had took to a be few convinced. Months. You were there. Right. And it's one of those things. It's a pleasure to have you on the program. It's just my pleasure to be here. You changed your voice. Yes. Did it change your life? Yes, it did. I wrote it a book called Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. Yes. Is it true in your case? Yes, it is. Richer and fuller, more confident, more relaxed, everything. It's amazing. It's you terrific. sound you sound just as it's as terrific. wonderful with the, the new voices you did yes, with the old, but no yes. pathology, no, no hoarseness. No pathology, no hoarseness, no anything. Just there. I can it's talk all day, twenty four hours. On and on. On and on. Okay. Never I, get tired. I think the audience would like to know, can you talk on and on without pathology, without hoarseness? Yes. If your voice is in the two thirds solution, you have midsection breath support. If you have nodules or polyps, can it go to cancer? Yes, as Joe was told it might. Can it go to strangled voice? Yes, it might. Because these are problems that occur if you misuse your speaking voice. Don't let that happen to you. Voice suicide is the all-American game. Many of you may say, hey, it can't be that easy. You focus your voice up there with midsection breath support. But from experience, let me tell you, it is. And you don't have to make a federal case. I want you to do this for me. I want you to say, mm-hmm. Can you do that? In the privacy of your home, you're sitting in your living room, you say, mm-hmm. Feel your voice up there, and your voice is down here. You'll feel a ring, a buzz, around the two-thirds solution that's around your lips and nose. And then, mm-hmm, one. Now, I have a cold, and I'm talking up here, and the cold will go away. My voice will come back. It will be full and resonant. And so will you, you if you have a cold or if you're talking down here, get your voice there. I'm Mort Cooper, the title of the program, Change Your Voice, Change Your Life, Getting Your Voice Back. Joe Powers just told you how to do it. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Joe, for joining us. Thank you, me. Dr. Cooper. Good night.